So welcome to lesson two. Uh, in this lesson, we're going to explore um, how plants fulfill our human needs on a, on a daily basis, from uh, our core survival needs up to needs for safety and all the way up to our need for self-realization and living a meaningful life. Um, so plants can fulfill our needs at every level of this pyramid of needs, which you may know as the pyramid of Maslow. And yeah, I want to begin by taking a moment to reflect on the role of plants in our own uh, personal lives. So we're going to do a little exercise here. Um, please make sure you have pen and paper ready. And then I want to invite you to um, think about the moment when you woke up this morning. So you're going to list all the plants that were part of your experience from the moment you woke up. So uh, you can think about uh, what materials were your sheets made of, um, what pajamas uh, were you maybe wearing, were some of these perhaps made of cotton, so the cotton plant is there. Uh, think about your bed, your bedside table, they could be made of wood, but do you know also of which tree? Um, so yeah, just write down everything that comes to mind that involves plants. You can think about house plants in your bedroom as well. <coughs> as well. Um, when you were in the bathroom, taking a shower, what kind of soap did you use? Um, they could have some plant materials in there most likely. Um, toothpaste and yeah you can continue until the moment you were getting dressed and the things you were wearing you know maybe jeans or some more novel materials like bamboo um, think about all your pieces of clothing and um, yeah do, these are just some ideas but yeah just take yourself through the morning up until the moment you start your breakfast and list all the plants that come to mind that were part of your day and um, yeah, you can pause the video for a moment, take some time to write these down, and then um, you can come back here. So yeah, I hope you've um, seen with this list how many plants are actually part of your life before you even you know, began your day fully. And it's very easy to go and now and expand and see how actually all human cultures use plants every day to fulfill so many different needs like food and drink, um, you know, plants are medicine, they can be poison, clothing, uh, you know, they are important in different religions and ceremonies as well. Um, so yeah, let's begin at the bottom of the pyramid and talk about um, survival needs. So first of all, survival needs are of course um, food and drink as well as oxygen. Um, and keeping warm also in our modern lives because plants are the basis of um, oil and gas, for example. Uh, so these are, first of all, at the basis, our survival needs. And second, uh, on the pyramid, plants fulfill our need for safety. So um, imagine uh, traditionally you have to have a fire to keep warm and also maybe to keep safe from wild animals. Um, perhaps you need um, plants to create a bow and arrow, to create certain weapons. Uh, and more in a modern way, or we can imagine that plants provide a boundary around the house with a fence or a hedge. And if you look at safety and security from another perspective, it can also be financial security. So any job that involves plants can provide that as well. Think about a herbalist or a baker or a gardener. So the second uh, level is um, human connection. So the need for human connection and social belonging. Uh, there's many ways that plants come in there. Think about sharing food, sharing a cup of tea or coffee, uh, shisha pipe, or the gift of flowers for lots of different occasions. And fourth on the level, um, on the pyramid of Maslow, think about creative expression, self-expression so many ways that we do that. So it can be, of course, through our clothes, through our jewelry. And traditionally, you know, our jewelry as well is made of, of plants. It can may, be made of seeds or wood. Um, and also uh, the, the dye, the paint uh, used to be made all of plants originally, like the henna shrub is a good example of this, the henna paintings on the skin. So kind of makeup as well. So when those needs are fulfilled, we come at the top and there's the need for self-actualization, living a meaningful life, understanding, you know, what is my place in the universe? Um, big existential questions. And plants, again, help us fulfill this need in many different ways. Like there is a lot of transformational experience in nature, which can be 
uh, a beautiful walk or a hike or climbing a mountain, but also the use of plants in different religions, like think about frankincense or sage, um, mugwort, plants for spiritual protection. Ceremonies and rituals um, are very important in this process of self-actualization. So you can think about a sweat lodge ceremony or a cacao ceremony. And then uh, what most likely will come to mind as well are journeys with psychedelic plant medicines like um, ayahuasca or San Pedro. And there are, of course, many more. So, yeah, that is the self-actualization level. And we've kind of quickly gone through all these levels of the pyramid of Maslow. And yeah, it's fascinating to see how many ways plants uh, play a role. And it's also to see, uh, interesting to see how it's different for different cultures. So depending on um, the conditions of the, the environment, the weather conditions, there are, of course, different needs for clothing or for building when it's a very cold or hot climate, as well as there is different availability. So there's going to be different plants available in the Amazon, for example, than in a very cold uh, Arctic climate. So every human culture has had to adapt in different ways and they have their own kind of unique creativity to generate solutions um, and this kind of knowledge that helps us interact and live with the environment, with the natural environment that we are part of. So in the next lesson, I'm going to share more about the study of ethnobotany itself. How did this study originate? When did it begin? And how has it evolved over time to where we are today.